Brian Willing, always willing to call a vet when he needs a hand. <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah, have a look at this. So it looks like an abscess on, on the face, especially there's a couple rule outs for lumpy bits on the face. So hopefully it's an abscess, but we're a bit worried it's um, actually lumpy jaw. It's Echinomyces um, bovis. It's um, what happens is they get like a, oh, a little splinter of feed or something and it, it gets up into their gum between the tooth and the gum and it bed, gets down into the mandible or into the face and then it hides in the bone, it causes osteomyelitis, the bone starts to break and they get these little trabeculae like honeycomb and they get big and big and fast. Um, and, um, and often you don't really see them unless you get right up close on them because they don't break through the skin. Um, like an abscess normal will burst out through the skin. Eventually they burst through the skin and then it's a real pain to love because they're no longer truckable. But um, yeah, so we're gonna make it to where we can have a good look at him. To do that, we wanna restrain his head. Um, we use these with these halters, which are really handy. The reason they're they're great is because they're easy to clean. Hey bud, you're right. Compared to a cloth halter that once it's dirty, you, you kinda, you're kinda um, hard to clean it. These quick releases are pretty handy. Hey, love. There you go, buddy. You're all right. You just pull his head around. This is a Warwick Crush made in Queensland. So if you can move it around, if it gets soft and squishy, then it's generally an abscess. But if you have a feel of that, it's very, very firm, like it's remodeling the bone inside that. Mm. Jeez. Yeah, so it's, there's his jaw, I'm guessing it's remodeling and it's just building up. So it's gonna be lumpy jaw. Um, lumpy jaw doesn't respond very well to antibiotics or, or, or even at hide, hiding from the immune system because it's living inside of these little caves inside the bone. Yeah, you're right. So um, that there's a product we can give called sodium iodide that we can give IV that will help with um, help to allow antibiotics to penetrate that. But first thing I'll do is just stick a needle in it and see. Oh, I know, son. You're right. Most of you saying, "Why are you restraining me?" And oh, I want out of here. <laughs> so I'll just take a oh, big gauge needle. See. Let's see if I can find a chewy center on this. When you go in there, it's a, it's pretty bony. You can feel the bonk bonk hitting bone straight away. Hell, feel that, brother. Have a little poke poke. It's super bony, eh? Right? Hey. And so it would have yeah. started like pretty mild, and then it just would have kept as a bone, and it's finding a stage where it's easy to see, and you can pick him up in the paddock, and so. Yeah, that's that's lumpy jaw. Why do they call it lumpy jaw? Well, because it's on his jaw and it's lumpy. <laughs> um, so we'll give him some sodium iodide. We'll give him some alamycin. So I'll show you how that works real quick. Big syringe. Take a little needle. Take a little needle. Take a bottle of sodide. This is brought to you by. I have sales propriety limited. Take some mail. Take a syringe. It's a bit quicker to dry it up if you push a bit of air into it. So I'm gonna give him 50 mils now, and then I'm gonna give I'm gonna give the rest of this to um to uh Ryan to, to repeat later, just subcutaneously, but we're going to give this IV. Let's come right now and show you how to do stuff IV, Michaela. Come on over here. So if you hold off the jugular, it always lies in this groove here. See that little furrow? You can actually see the pulse behind it. That's the carotid beating behind the jugular. If I hold off like this with my hands, I've got the karate chop, so my fingers are laying in that groove. That'll fill up. It's often easier to see it go away than to see it fill. So when I let go, you're going to see it drop. Ready? See it fall? Pretty rad, eh? <laughs> Gonna let that fill again. 
You can stick a needle in and then hook on the syringe if you're confident. You just hook on to it. And I'm just gonna put this in slowly. If you put it in super fast, you can not really give them a reaction, but it causes a bit of hemolysis, like it breaks up the blood vessels. Blood vessels. And then just keep pulling every now and again to make sure you still got blood in the syringe. Hit pull. Cool, cool. Nice big IV injection. So lots of fresh blood. All right, love. Cool, cool. So we'll give that as well as a broad spectrum antibiotic. So we're going to give him some alamycin 300. Also probably give him a little shot of meloxicam just to help him feel better. Not that this is painful, but just to settle down inflammation. And then we're going to get Ryan to repeat the injection of sodide and alamycin in about five days. Um, so we've got, um, um, I'll mix, unless, do you think he'd be able to give it IV after yeah. watching that? Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll mix it up 50-50 and you can give it subcutaneous, yeah. which would be easy. And then um, yeah, a bit of alamycin. And that's the best hope we've got. And hopefully what we'll do is we'll knock enough of that out that he'll continue to improve. If he, okay. if he doesn't improve, it's more of a sad story for him. Mm. Yep. We're only happy endings here, so <laughs> we won't tell you that part. <laughs> Son of a gun. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to stress you out. All right, so we'll do that. We'll get the other goodies, and that's pretty much it. That's Lumpy Jaw in a nutshell. Doggone it. Uh, bony proliferation uh, as the as the Actinomyces bovis is trying to hide inside the uh, inside the bone there. Not so much painful, but yeah, just eventually it makes it to where he can't eat very well and things. Yeah, Doggone he's lost, lost 